Okay, we'll start over here with my little clone. In a majority of VR games, the player controller is just a capsule from the feet to the head. Sometimes there'll be a different head collider, or you go the full bone work route and have multiple different sections for the feet, the knees, the chest, the head. But I say generally speaking, they're just a capsule. In Axiom, we're doing something slightly different. We're not doing anything groundbreaking, but it's something important that I think a lot of other VR games miss out on. I think we often forget that in VR, we only have the head and hands. We have no legs or feet being tracked at all. So that's why our player controller, as you can see, is made up of just a head collider and a body collider. And the hand colliders, but they're separate. The controller itself is, as you see here, this is exactly how it looks. It's using the exact same systems as me walking around as I am right now. The only difference being I can grab this one and move them around. Now the way we do this is using a PID controller. What we do is we shoot a ray down from just above the start of the capsule to where the feet would be. That ray is checking if there's any ground between this area. And if there is something to stand on, it applies a force upwards to keep the player on the ground even though there's not any actual collision happening here. Now initially the reason I did this wasn't even for the benefits. I did this because I like when you land in VR and you have that slight little bit of downward force just because of how you landed. This happens a lot in games like Boneworks and Bone Lab where they have a full player body structure. Except I didn't want to go that route because of all the extra movement features that I wanted to add. So instead we're using this approach, which came with more benefits than you'd expect. For example, stairs. They're notoriously annoying to handle in player controllers anyway, but in VR they're even more so. And so oftentimes you walk up to a stair and you'll just get stuck. Having no collider on the bottom half of the player means the player can just step up onto stairs. You can see I can push him up all of them and he'll handle it all. And you can see this over here when I walk up the stairs. Now, the majority of the time, I'd still just put an invisible collider slanted to give the illusion of stairs, but that doesn't fix things like uneven terrain where you would need just that extra little bit of step height to get you over some ledges. The other benefit comes from jumping. Something you see quite often in VR is when you try and jump up to a place and your body just hits it. Usually, it's on the lower half though, so a lot of the time, without you even knowing, you'd hit your leg and you'd fall. With this, I can just jump and as long as the top half of the body makes it over, the rest will too and it'll stand straight back up. Again, you can see this over here, if I just try and jump up here, there you go. Now if we move on to control, one of the ways we eliminate motion sickness in VR is by giving the player full control. A lot of times this means that nothing ever happens to the player unless they're doing something. I think the best example of this is climbing, because you'd think it would cause motion sickness, but it was one of the first features that I ever saw in a VR game. And I think that's because of the fact everything that happens to your player happens because you do it. As I'm climbing, I'm just moving my controller down. That pushes me up. It does what I expect. And that brings me on to freedom. Because we force so much control on the player, we oftentimes miss out on the freedom. I don't think it has to be this way. For example, back years ago, one of the first games I ever saw do flipping was Sirento VR. They just let the entire player flip around on its axis. And since I saw that, I just wanted to make a version of it that was as free as possible, so the player can just do whatever they want when they're in the air. I don't think this really breaks all of the rules of the control before. If you think about it, you're just moving your joystick anyway. It just happens to be on an axis that you're not used to. As we move further down, we uh, move into unrestrained locomotion. The example I have in this game is sliding. Compared to everything else, you have no restraints. You push down on the on the joystick to enter a slide, and you have no more control. Until you either come to a stop or lift up your joystick, there's nothing you can do. You're just moving in that direction. Beyond that, you're also at the whims of the terrain that you're sliding down, which in theory should break, again, all of the rules from before. I think that we overcome this by just giving the player a control. You push it down to start sliding, and you lift it up to stop. Another example of this is just gravity. If you look back at some older VR games, you'll notice that the gravity either isn't there and you'll just teleport to the floor, or the gravity is a static constant where you'll just move at one speed. But we've had gravity and jumping in VR games for years now, so I don't see why we shouldn't try even more things. Which brings me to my final one, which is completely uncontrollable movement. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky, because not everyone is going to be able to handle this, just as not everyone can handle everything else I mentioned. But I don't think we should completely ignore it for that fact. I mean, you can see in things like Bone Lab, people love to just mess around with ragdolls and be thrown about by the game itself. So while I'm developing this game, I'm not shying away from this uncontrollable movement. Whether it comes to uh, cut themes or boss fights or just some enemy interactions, I don't think it's terrible if the player gets moved by their surroundings and their environment. And I've built this very large example to show you the type of thing you can do if you let the player be affected by their environment. That was just an overview of some of the things we're messing about with in Axiom in terms of movement and locomotion. This is still very early days for this project, so there's going to be even more things that come in the future, especially when it comes to the uncontrollable 